Yo, Steve Young's been saying a lot of things, and I want to play this sound because it's relevant. He said it again last week, and he keeps harping on it. He keeps talking about the relationship between Kyle and Shanahan, and I want to, or Kyle Shanahan and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. And I want to I want to touch on something. Here. Okay. The trust between coach, head coach Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo has never been what it needed to be. Yeah. How do I gain trust? Because how did he try to manage the situation? I manage with a great. Innovative running game. Yeah, it's really yeah. one best in the league. Exactly. Yes. They don't yes. have the runner now. Yes. They don't, they've got people hurt. So there's no there's no way to not expose this lack of trust. It has yeah. to come out now, and they have to see if they can work it out. So Steve Young has been mm. going on and on and on mm. all season long about the trust between Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo. The trust. And I thought Sunday after watching the game back yesterday, and I'm watching Jimmy and I'm watching Kyle, and they're up 24 to 14. And Kyle allowed Jimmy to throw the football. Pre-ACL Jimmy, maybe he gets that same opportunity. I don't remember them having a lead of that magnitude, but right. yes, yes. I, you I, know what I'm saying? Hypothetically, what? yes. Hypothetically, I get where you're, yes. you're going. 24-14, and Jimmy and Shanahan dials up a pass, mm. saying, go ahead and hit Dwelly if you need to, hit McCaffrey if you need to. Then the the beautiful touchdown pass to George Kittle that we didn't harp on enough. Rolling out to his left, hitting George Kittle his stride. Might have been over his best Taylor Rapp. Ever as a Niner. I got pre ACL injury Jimmy Fives on Ooh. that play. Dante Pettis, remember Minnesota season oh, yeah. opener where he throws it off the back foot, yeah. roll it out to his left, it hits Dante Pettis in the back of the end zone. Where he was spinning, scrambling. Uh, it was yeah. unbelievable. It was. Jimmy was making plays. And that was early in 2018. That was the first game of the season. But then you think about 2017 and and Jimmy Garoppolo that we saw was confident. And I think for the first time in a long time, we saw Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo in lockstep. There was a trust factor. There was a confidence factor in the starting quarterback. And I think that's going to bowl well for them in the second half of the season. It's a really interesting point that you bring up there that I hadn't really considered because when I'm watching it in real time, it just felt like they were more aggressive. I didn't even think about the whole trust factor with Jimmy Garoppolo. How many times, B, and then they did this when they get down into the into the red zone, where they're like, uh, here come two predictable runs, right. and then it's a third and long, you know, and, and you just kind of know that they have a very minimal opportunity to score a touchdown. It did feel like they were more aggressive and put their foot on the throat, and I love that. Now, you could say that's Jimmy and him having more trust in him. I think it's also Christian McCaffrey igniting more of an aggressive nature in general from Kyle Shanahan knowing that he's got a guy underneath that if the play breaks down, down the field, and there's no one to throw to, I can check down and still be able to get positive yards. I think that's a big little like tool in the back pocket. No doubt Christian McCaffrey helps. No doubt Christian McCaffrey helps. But for Shanahan in that situation, and I looked at it and I watched that drive over and over and over again like, Damn, this is not like Shedahan usually sits on that. There was more bravado you know in that drive. Like there was so much bravado, but Shedahan we saw for years. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest complaints we had in the postseason against the Cowboys, against the Rams in the NFC Championship game, cop obviously the Cowboys in the wild card game was go ahead, step on the gas and put them away. Mm. Put the teams away. Put them away. And even in the Tennessee game on Christmas Eve, they didn't put them away, right? No. On that Thursday night football game. And for the first time in a long time, I saw a lot of trust. I saw a lot of trust. Steve Young has been hitting on this. It feels like every single week of the season, the quarterback mm -hmm. and the coach have to be in lockstep. And I thought just for the first time in a long time, I saw Jimmy Garoppolo look extremely confident. And Shanahan saying, you know what? I'm going to take the training wheels off. Yeah, he only threw it 25 mm. times. They called 26 pass plays in total. But you know what? Let's go ahead and put these guys away. Wouldn't you agree? It wasn't necessarily, and I think this is where the data guys kind of drive me crazy. It's not just the raw attempts. It's the situational spots where they're yep. throwing it, right? Like early in downs and then the being able to rip plays downfield, throwing in the red zone. B, think about this. Like they got into the red zone. They had the three touchdowns where it was um, – CMC running one in late in the game, the George Kittle touchdown that preceded that, and then you had before that Christian McCaffrey catching a touchdown pass, which yeah. was, I believe, a third down play right there. How many times do, on two of those occasions, they settle for three? All the time. And, and, and I it, mean, all it's the a time. totally different game if any one of those is a field goal as, a, as opposed to a touchdown. No so doubt. my biggest issue has been with this team, we don't score enough touchdowns. And they it don't. felt like they finally got away from the, oh, let's just play conservative. No, four touchdowns in all, 
Uh, they take advantage of their red zone opportunities. And the drive that really, that really set them apart was when they went up 17-14. And again, that was another drive. Take away the 24-14, they throw it to Dwelly, they throw it to Kittle, mm-hmm. they put the game away. That was beautiful. That, that really something was. Beautiful. But the drive to go up 17-14 where they go 11 plays, 88 yards. And Jimmy 7-7. Seven seven, that was 71 drive. yards. Yep. They went down the field with Jimmy's right arm mm-hmm. and getting the ball to the playmaker's hands. Yep. And right then and there, I said, wow, Shanahan has turned the page. Jimmy's turned the page. And it all has to do with Christian McCaffrey. I get it. Christian McCaffrey is going to open up everything. He was the star of the show at SoFi Stadium. I can't wait to talk to Baldy about him and what he saw at SoFi Stadium with Christian McCaffrey. But the but the confidence, Shanahan said, you know what? I know I got this toy mm-hmm. number 23. Jimmy, go out there and just play. And I thought Jimmy played free. He played confident. And I think for the first time in a long time, again, Going into the second half of the season when you're playing the Tampa Bay's mm-hmm. or you're playing Washington's nasty front, they're top 10 in sacks. They're top 10 uh, in pressure rates. Um, when they're playing uh, the Chargers and Khalil Mack coming off that edge, having that trust in the quarterback is something that we've been screaming about for three years. Kyle doesn't trust Jimmy. He doesn't trust Jimmy. Jimmy's not feeling Kyle, blah, blah, blah. A trait like McCaffrey has finally brought the trust in the building, and I think this offense – and we'll, we'll talk about it in the NFC and take a long, broader picture at the NFC and the conference and who's going to have the pressure and whatnot at quarterback. This offense may score 30 points a game the rest of the way. And this, I think, is what Boy, we've been waiting that. for. This is – Shanahan's never had this many toys, <laughs> never had this many playmakers. Jimmy's never had this many playmakers around him. And when you get a home run hitter like Chris McCaffrey, and you already know Debo Samuel's a home run hitter, this team may explode offensively in the second half of the season. One of my buddies hit me up yesterday, and my buddy Johnny Bologna, big time football fan, big Niner fan, and he basically the, the summation of the text was something to this effect: "Be man, I knew McCaffrey was good. I didn't know he was this good." And I feel like everyone in the Bay Area, for the most part, was saying something similar. Like I knew he was good. But my God, when he's on your team and you watch him beat your division rival the way that he did, I think a lot of people were like, he's a lot more talented than than even I assumed. And I'm not saying that people didn't think he was good. But I think when you watch someone on your team versus like, you know, watching highlights or whatever, you realize what their impact is on a play-in, play-out basis. I think a lot of people came to realize how special Christian McCaffrey is a talent. I don't know if people found out. I think they just forgot how good he was. I mean, how many I people are watching forgot. Panthers football? Like, really, truly. Like, even if you watch the red zone. It's not just the Panthers. I mean. He was playing down the road 30 minutes away. B, I mean, we, we could talk all day about college football here, and I Stanford, hear you. Stanford was packed. It was also five McCaffrey. years ago. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I said people forgot. We forgot how good he was. <sighs> We've been reminded of how good he was. Because he was in Carolina and you play fantasy football. Yeah, I play I fantasy Everybody football. Everybody plays fantasy. I probably had Christian McCaffrey for the first three years of his career. Yeah, but how many people league. have him in, in, in fantasy, but right. they don't watch him play? And there's a difference between, like, observing on fantasy and seeing them, the raw numbers I and mean, then pe- watching a guy people play. People don't watch the highlights of their players? I, again, I'm just saying, I think like, I got a lot of texts like, yesterday like, about like, that. Uh, no, that's that's fine. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I just, I think a lot of people, in my opinion, forgot. Now, your friends probably didn't watch Stanford. I watch a lot of Stanford. A lot of my friends watch college football. Chris McCaffrey's a special player. When he got traded here, we, we played all those highlights of him in college. Mm-hmm. Pac-12 championship, Rose Bowl, random games against Cal. Like, it, it, this guy was special. And in Carolina, when you're seeing him with Cam Newton, because we all have red zone, there's always a Panther red zone game on, especially with Cam Newton and uh, Chris McCaffrey. It was like, man, this guy's still good. He's still really, really good. And I think... In my opinion, I think we just forgot how good he was. And to see that on Sunday, the, the uh, pass game, the run game, what he does, throwing the football. Yes, he's a special, special player. Now, can he stay healthy? That's one thing. We'll see about well, that's that. that's the big question That's mark. the big question mark for anybody. Devo, Kittle, mm. um, IU, for that matter, and Christian McCaffrey. But if this core is healthy with Christian McCaffrey and what he's going to do in this offense, again, this offense is going to turn it up a notch. Can they match their defense? I have no idea. But the tools are in place 
the tools are in place for this offense to just go crazy. He um, has certainly added a, a layer of explosion to their offense, which they didn't have before. It felt like when they inserted Raheem Mostert into the lineup late in 2019, it was like, oh, yep. oh, we got pop because they got a little bit of that from Breida early on in the season. And then it felt like the games were too physical for him um, as, as the middle part of the season wore on in mm. 2019. And then when you get Mostert, it was like a shot in the arm. You're getting that same Mostert explosion, but he's just a better all-around player yeah. in almost yeah, every single good. facet. And I believe he can do some more things between the tackles that Mostert can't do. Speed is a killer. And I think we underrated his speed in general, obviously his toughness. And then what he does in the passing game to help out Garoppolo. I mean, you're talking about the trust factor. I really do believe, like, Jimmy just looked so much more comfortable he having did. that check down option. So, so Steve Young was talking about the Jimmy stuff, right? He's always talking about the Jimmy stuff. And Jimmy this and Jimmy that and Jimmy this and Jimmy that. What about this situation? Adam Schefter was on the Pat McAfee show. <laughs> did you hear this? Uh-huh. Let our audience hear it. Here's what Adam Schefter said about a possible playmaker joining the 49ers. I'll say this. I've wondered that. If they keep winning, why would they not look at him? They were interested in him last year. Uh, I, I think he'd like to be in L.A. But look, they certainly could use another wide receiver. They've had a lot of injuries. Yesterday, they were down to basically Ayuk. Juwan Jennings didn't play. Deebo Samuel didn't play. They were short at that spot anyway. Uh, to me, that that's... That's an intriguing match, and we'll find out whether the two sides both feel the same way that we all do. So mm. that player, that him, that guy, that playmaker, Adam Schefter was talking about Odom Beckham Jr. Mm. Odom Beckham Jr. Now there's a couple names that have been linked to the Bay Area. We'll talk about one in basketball in a little bit, but Odom Beckham Jr., a 49er. Why not? I mean, I know that oh, they have too many guys to catch passes like – you, you add another wide receiver. Look, right now, just look at it right now. I like Jawan Jennings. He ain't scaring nobody on another defense. You throw Odell Beckham Jr. as a third wide receiver or even a number two wide receiver out there um, in certain situations, like now you got some juice. He's an unbelievable route runner. He's extremely tough. He killed them in the NFC Championship game. And I think he's one of the missing pieces for the Rams this year. Be interesting. Why are, you, why are you reluctant? You got Christian McCaffrey. I don't think you need Odell Beckham Jr. now. Really? Ayuk is coming. Ayuk is coming along, man. Of course, Ayuk is coming along. Kittle's coming along. Where's the targets at? This offense is not going to all of a sudden start throwing 35, 40 no. times a game. That's not their. That's not their recipe for success. So, with that said, if Jimmy, we want, we all want Jimmy to throw between twenty to twenty-five times. That's the ideal situation for, for Jimmy sure. Garoppolo. For sure, consistent, uh, high completion percentage, twenty to twenty-five times. Well, I'm looking at McCaffrey in the pass game. He's probably going to get about seven targets. At least. Ayuk's going to get about seven targets. Mm -hmm. Kittle's going to get about seven targets. That's 21 targets. Without throwing a D-ball. Without throwing a D-ball. Yeah, but I, I I just think this is more about certain situations. Because there's going to be a game at some point where they're going to have to throw from behind. And it'd be nice to have more weapons in that. And I yeah. also think that Odell realizes that like he's coming in at the end of the year, play nice, Try to get a championship and then set yourself up where you make a couple of big-time plays in a playoff game to where a team next year gives him a contract.